Good morning, New Bethel. Join us for praise and worship. And if you know God's been good to you, won't you want to make it smile?
beginning at verse 15. Listen to what he says. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, I not. But what I hate, that do I. Listen to what he says. He says, but what I hate, I find myself doing. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Finally, verse 19, listen to what he says. He says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Amen. He, he wants to do the right thing. When he tries to do right, it seems like he ends up doing wrong. Yes, Lord. Is that on anybody's street right there? Yes, Lord. Amen. For a few moments, I want to talk in this thought, inside job. Amen. Inside job. I don't know about you. I cannot speak for you. I cannot attest to your daily walk and your beliefs. But every day, I strive and desire to do what is right. And that should be your target every day. When you wake up in the morning, it ought to be on the top of your agenda to at least try to do what's right. Not just some days, but every day. It feels good to do right, to live right. To strive to be right. It, 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 it feels good. Yes. To want to be better each day. Yeah. Better tomorrow than you were today. Yeah. But it feels good to live your life so that others can see that not only are there rewards for right living, but foster an atmosphere so that those around us can see that we practice what we preach. Paul uses the seventh chapter of Romans to talk about how the law places us under subjection to demand that we do which seems to be almost impossible to follow. You know, following God's law is a great thing yeah. to, 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 to follow his laws, his commandments, but following the law won't save you. Yeah, following God's law, it pleases God, but it will not save us. Yeah, A lot of people think that coming to church is going to save them. But you don't come to church in order to be saved. You come to church because you're already saved. And obeying God's commandments, it's a, it's a great work. But Paul would want us to know that we are saved by grace. And not from the things that we do. Don't, don't get caught up so much on works that we forget about that little word called grace. If then we have 
experience the saving power of a loving Savior who died for our sins and we are no longer under the law that kept us bound for so many years. But when we put our trust in Jesus, I'm talking about Jesus, we, we, we died to the law and are united with Jesus the Christ. It is not because of what we did. It is because his love for us permitted him or gave him access to do what he did, not because he had to, but because he wanted to do it. The law is not dead. It's a lie. I'm talk, we're talking about the law and the commandments. It, it, it's, it's, they're not dead. They're still alive. But they are broken every day. Even if the law it's no longer ruling over us. It does not mean that it's not present. But it does not allow us to live our life as an outlaw. Just because we can, the, the text says, or uh, the scripture says, I can do all things. And just because the text says we can do all things doesn't mean we have to do all things. So Paul informs us of his personal battle. He refers to it pretty much to me as an inside job. You know, we, 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 we carry on a certain way on the outside. We want everybody to see this, this, this persona yeah. on the outside. But what is the inside life? The law keeps busting me up upside the head. I try to do right. But it seems like there's something that's pulling me in the direction which I don't want to go. Paul says, I know the law, and the law was made for us, and the law keeps me in line with the will of God. And he, he understands that, but he says, but. He, in other words, I'm at my wit's end. Is there no help, no hope? Do you not know that in ancient customs, lawbreakers, some lawbreakers, let, let, let me see what they would do. When you broke the law in ancient times, they would tie a dead body and put it on your back. And you would have to walk around with that dead body on your back. And in the process of it decomposing, and just rotting away, that in turn would fall on you. So a lot of times the things that we are carrying around, it makes us worse than we really are. A lot of us are carrying around some dead things and it won't let us be great. Because we've got this dead stuff that just reminds us every day that we are carrying around things that are making us worse by the day. There's a term called necrophilia. Necrophilia is, is basically that you, you get off to sleeping with dead things. Some of us are carrying around dead things every day, and if we're not careful, it's going to rot our spirits. So, because of Jesus, there's some good news. Our sins are forgiven, and by all means, this is not a going out of business sale. However, we do reap what we sow a lot of times. And so every day, it's a battle. How many of you struggle every day? Yeah. Every day, it's a battle. And some days are better than others. And sometimes sin goes into what we call remission. In other words, when a person who's dealing with cancer, when that cancer goes into remission, it does not mean that the cancer has not gone completely from our bodies. It just means it's at a point now to where it's really not causing a lot of pain right now. So a lot of us, we have learned how to live with sin in our lives to where it's, it, 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 it doesn't leave, but we learn how to adapt to it. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Well, watch this. It, 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 it's a hard act to follow since we are flesh. I must do everything in my power, which is limited, to get past this flesh. Yes. Right there it says that I want to do good. I, I really do. Every morning, I wake up just like you. Right. I want to do good. But sometimes I end up doing bad. I don't want to end up doing the things that I know that I shouldn't be doing. And, and just like Paul, Paul says it's tearing me apart from the inside out. In other words, this, this, this flesh, this sin, it's pulling me in different directions. My waking moments are filled with challenges. And every day we wrestle with flesh. And sometimes, I think I need to tell you, flesh does win. All of us have done some things that we're not proud of. All of us, I've often said that all of us in here, we've done some things that we really wish we could push the delete button on. But watch this. Some things that we weren't proud of. And even though we went ahead and did it anyway, that feeling of guilt that follows us around, the negativity, the shame that comes upon us, uh, uh, the spirit tells us don't, but somehow the flesh will overrule and tell us that it's okay to go ahead and do it. So, if you're anything like me, sometimes we find ourselves in constant conflict daily with good and evil. It's not above us to desire to do the right thing. The Ten Commandments, when God composed them to mankind, they were good. But after a while, sin took these commandments and used them against us. Yes, you know, and all of us in here, we wrestle with the commandments. But all of us don't wrestle with the same commandments collectively. Yes, it's not my place to point out what you wrestle with and then overlook what I wrestle with. At some point, we all wrestle with something. We all have temptations and we all have shortcomings and we all have problems. We wrestle with flesh every day. Finally, watch this. Paul says, I know the law cold, but I can't keep it. Mm. Isn't that amazing that this would come from one of God's own, his, one of his choice vessels? He says, I know what the law says, but even I have, I, I find myself wrestling with doing right all the time. Paul says, I know the law, but I can't keep it. I know what's right, but sometimes I don't do it. And I want to do right, but I wrestle with doing right on a daily basis. So watch this. I end up making a resolution. Oh, you know how we do. I end up making resolutions that I'm not going to live like that anymore. But I find myself going back to that old foolishness again. Something on the inside seems to take over almost every time. So is there any hope? Is there any hope for, for you and me to get back into the graces of God? Well, one of the first things we need to do is we need to understand that we all fall short. But I cannot keep using that as an excuse to continue to do wrong. There has to come a point where I grow beyond my foolishness. So I love this when he says in chapter 8, verse 1. Watch this, look what he says. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. In order to do that, I'm going to have to put Jesus first and foremost in my life. Yes. And because of Jesus, hallelujah, our sins are yeah. forgiven by 
by all means, this is not a going out of business sale. Again, this is not giving me free reign to sin because I rely on the forgiveness of God. Because if I keep on doing what I keep on doing, eventually it's going to catch up with me. So watch this. He says, I want to do right. But it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Sometimes people that we come in contact with on a daily basis, they take us there. And if we're not careful, we will find ourselves being ungodly and doing ungodly things. But I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So what do you do when you find yourself doing things that you prefer not to do, but you find yourself doing them anyway? Well, I've got to put God first in my life. And every day, I gotta pray and ask for guidance and direction. So how, do, how does that happen, Pastor? I need to start working up and asking God to work on my resistance. Because when your resistance is low, Satan comes in and takes control of us and our families. So not only do I pray that my resistance against sin comes into fruition, but I pray for the sins of my family. Finally, I, I, I like uh, what Job did. If we, when you, we talked about Job uh, some time ago, um, he prayed for his children. When his children didn't even pray for themselves, he prayed for his children. You may know someone that's wrestling with sin until it looks like it's about to take over their lives. Or they may be going down a path of destruction. There is a thing called intercessory prayer. That's when I, I pray to God. It's me praying on your behalf. So all of us may have some family members. Some immediate family members that may need intercessory prayer because this thing, this sin, it's just, it's tearing me apart. It's, it's, it's making me bow down and do things that I would prefer not to do. And every time I want to get out of it, it just keeps putting me back in. So God, I pray right now. Come on, right where you are, lift your hands right now. Lord, I'm at a place now where it seems like this thing that I'm in is stronger than I am. And I don't want to be in it. This world, this, this world, Lord, you've got to intervene. We ask it right now. Search our hearts. Search our minds. And then, Lord, if there's anything in there that shouldn't be, I humbly ask that you remove it so I can be all that you want me to be. Lord, let us always bear in mind there's something in our lives that we can't get rid of. We don't own it, it owns us. So, whoever I'm speaking to, and you don't want to be owned any longer. Lift your hands now and submit yourself to God. I need you right now to help me get through this. This, Just like Paul said, that as far as this flesh is concerned, there's no good thing that can come from it. And then, Lord, I thank you for another day. Yeah, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. 
So Lord, whoever I'm speaking to right now, I send an intercessory prayer from my mouth to your ears that you would deliver them from that sinful life. Because I want to be right. I want to be saved. And I want to be made whole. Not only do I pray for me, but I pray for those that are around me. I'm even praying right now for my enemies. Experience teaches us that if we pray for them, you in turn make them become our footstool. So I thank you now that I believe that better days are ahead right now. We call those things that be not as though they already are. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good morning again. Last Sunday in September. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday in October. I'm going to ask you all to come on out. I have communion that I want to give you and I want to do that with you uh, next Sunday, uh, first Sunday in October. Uh, come on by. I want to see you. I really do. I miss you. And I uh, hope you really miss us and miss this church. Uh, don't forget that you can always uh, go to our website, www.nbbw.org. And as always, there are names there that want to assist you in your giving and your love gift to our church. It is the right thing to do. So may God bless you and may God keep you. And I hope by now we are all registered to vote because uh, a great election is coming up and you know what I'm talking about so do the right thing and we love you and we'll see you again on next Sunday until then we love you have a good day bye bye